Thank you, João, for your words. My dear friend, Antonio Calçadissá, board, board, uh, board president of the Portuguese Diaspora Council. My dear friend, José Manuel Drombarroso, chairman of Euro-Africa Forum Portugal. Dear Katia Batista, vice dean of Nova School of Business and Economics. My dear friends, I want to give you all a warm welcome to Cascais and, of course, a welcome to this beautiful campus of Nova School of Business and Economics. We are one of the most international schools in Portugal in, in one of the most international municipalities in Portugal. Let me rephrase this. Uh, I'm pretty sure that we are the most international school in Portugal and for sure the most international municipality in Portugal. 40% of our students in this campus are foreigners. More than 120 different nationalities are living here today in this municipality that we call Cascais. This was the path we always designed. Cascais has always been a land with open arms to the world. The bonds between the people, between the continents, and between religions have always been part of our way of being. Today, this route of globalization has taken a major setback. First, a pandemic, and then a war in Europe have jeopardized so much of what we, we had been built. With this return to a multipolar world, we have blurred so many of the objectives we have prioritized and essential. Tackling inequalities has taken a back seat. Trade dependencies have been seen as a risk. Climate change have been postponed and coal-fired power plants have been reactivated. The prioritization of emergencies has changed. But that does not mean that they have ceased to exist. On the contrary, they are aggravated by the postponement of our actions. It is therefore essential that despite the emergence of this crazy world that we are living today, there are those who remain focused on the good old goals. This is the case of this family, of this Diaspora Council, and of course this Euro-African Forum. The ties between Africa and Europe must continue to be strengthened. Cooperations, development, and partnerships must be deepened. I remain fully convinced that this will be a good deal for our two continents. And to protect this, dialogue and trust are increasingly necessary. History tells us and the present that disputes between the various poles of geopolitical tension are often not played out on their own territories, but so -called, on so-called neutral ground. Neutral ground like Europe and like Africa. It is therefore up to our two continents, their policymakers, their entrepreneurs, and their citizens to take their destiny, their destiny into their own hands, to build our future of prosperity and our future of confidence. And I have no doubt that together we will be stronger, that this new world opens a motorway of opportunities between our two continents, and as I said a year ago, at this same Euro African Forum, I ended that forum by, by a speech, by quoting Saint Exupéry and reinforcing the idea that more than looking to each other, Europe and Africa must look to the future together. Today, despite all the changes of our new world, I continue with the same conviction, the same desire, and the same vision. A future built hand in hand in which the whole continent and the newest continent learn and build a new world, a world of opportunities, a world of prosperity, a fairer world. Unfortunately, this world is not just a dream. It must be worked for, and that is why I thank again deeply to the Portuguese diaspora and this Euro-African Forum for getting this hands-on attitude, for choosing the path of dialogue and working so that together, we can all find solutions and row towards this new, beautiful world. Thank you very much.